Close your eyes and watch your breath. may not seem like much, but if you can keep the mind with the breath, you're developing some important qualities of mind, which is what the Pali word for meditation, bhavana, means. It means to develop, because the mind needs to develop. And we develop mindfulness by remembering to stay with the breath, alertness by keeping watch over what's going on both in the breath and in the mind, and then ardency. The desire to do this well. Because you have to depend on these qualities. If you're going to succeed in anything at all in life, you need these thing, three qualities of mind. If you've got a job to do, if you forget what you're doing, you forget how to do it well, that's not going to be good. Lack of mindfulness. Lack of alertness, you're not paying attention to what you're doing. Lack of ardency, you don't really try. How can any kind of work like that succeed? So these are qualities in the mind that we need to strengthen. The mind needs to be exercised, just like the body needs exercise. And this is how we exercise the mind. Instead of running around, we, get, we try to make it very still with the breath. And it's the other qualities that keep it still. Those are the ones that are getting exercised. Because after all, the mind is what's going to determine whether we're going to be suffering in this lifetime or we're going to be happy in this lifetime. When the Buddha talked about suffering, he didn't say suffering is in the hot weather or cold weather or a good economy or a bad economy. Suffering comes from within the mind, things we hold on to that we shouldn't hold on to, things we feed off of that make us sick. That's what it comes down to. So we learn how to train the mind so it doesn't feed off those things like it wants to get nice sights, nice smells, nice sounds, nice tastes, nice tactile sensations. And it tries to arrange the world to create these things, but the world doesn't really cooperate. Cooperate some, otherwise we wouldn't even try. But it doesn't cooperate in the long term. We're going bound to be disappointed. And then, where is the suffering? The suffering is not outside there in the sights or sounds. The suffering is here in the mind. So the mind is what creates suffering. The mind is what suffers, and is also what can put an end to suffering. So it's got to be trained. So this mind you have, instead of being a mind of suffering, becomes a mind of happiness. This is what we practice merit for. We learn how to be generous. We learn how to be virtuous. Virtuous means refraining from doing things that are going to be harmful. And also refraining from looking at things with the idea of giving rise to more greed, aversion, and delusion of the mind. Listening things, tasting things to give rise to these defilements. We basically say no. We put some control, some restraint over our activities. And then with meditation, you develop good qualities of the mind. And these are things you can depend on. When you've got these qualities in the mind, then even if the weather's bad, it's hot like it's supposed to be this week, or the economy's bad, or the politics are bad, or whatever's bad, the mind doesn't have to suffer. Because the world has never promised that it's going to be good for us. We were the ones who wanted to take birth here. We thought it would be a good opportunity, so we slipped in. It didn't make any promises. So we've got to make some promises to ourselves that no matter what happens, we're not going to cause ourselves suffering, because it's the suffering that we cause ourselves that really weighs down in the mind. That can stay with you for a long time. The hot weather comes, the hot weather goes, cold weather comes, cold weather goes. That's the nature of the world. But the mind that holds on to things in a way that makes it suffer, okay, that can last for a long time. So we have to train the mind so it doesn't do that, learn how to be more mindful, more alert, more ardent in doing what's right. <coughs> and you find that this mind, which has been a suffering mind, turns into a happy mind because of its own activities. Because that's where everything lies. And Buddha kept pointing back to our act activities, back to, back to our actions. This is where happiness comes from. This is where misery comes from. So what are you going to do? Try to act in a way that gives rise to happiness, gives rise to well-being, that doesn't harm yourself or anybody else. And then strengthen the mind with this exercise, keeping the breath in mind, try to be with the breath, make it comfortable, and stay here. And you develop the qualities you need to succeed not only in this endeavor, but also all the other endeavors you might undertake. The meditation is that useful and that important in finding true happiness in life. <coughs>